Happy Pokemon Day everyone! Well it's not Pokemon Day yet, but with Pokemon Day coming soon, I want to get a wishlist type video up. I want to talk about the top 5 Pokemon spinoffs I want to see happen. These aren't games I think will be announced this Pokemon Day, or maybe even ever, but it will be fun to talk about the games I want to be real. And I specify spinoffs because they're more fun to talk about. I mean, what can you talk about with main series? A Scarlet and Violet 3rd version or DLC? Gen 5 remakes? With games like those, it's not a matter of if, but when. Spinoffs on the other hand offer more creativity. Pokemon games are larger variety of spin-offs, and the Switch era has already offered some pretty good spin-offs, and I'd like to see more. In order of what I think of the highest chance to least chance, let's talk about my top 5 Pokemon spin-off wishlist, with my reasonings for why they could and should happen. I'll start with the spin-off I want since 2020, Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Explorers DX. Please, Pokemon Company, don't let the shiny Selby and Rescue Team DX just be a tease. Let it become real. Explorers of the Sky was my first ever Pokemon game. Back when I first started getting to Pokemon, I asked my parents for a Pokemon game for Christmas. It was 2009, and they didn't know the difference. I guess they just saw the Pokemon logo and picked it up. Don't worry, I'll play my first main series a year later, when I got Platinum for my birthday. This Mega Explorer of the Sky was my first ever Pokemon game, though I wouldn't fully appreciate it until high school. I never be explored as a kid, since I never checked a mission board. I would never read in-game text. And knowing that the Wii U eShop is closing down, I decided to get Explorers of Sky on my Wii U, just in case anything happened to my cartridge. Anyways, the story and characters really hold up, and so with the Wii U eShop closing down next month, and the option to officially play the original coming to a close, it's the perfect time to remake this game just like Rescue Team DX. My worry is that it doesn't seem like Rescue Team DX sold too well. Rescue Team DX sold 1.26 million copies as of now, which does sound amazing, but is utterly laughable when compared to the main series. Which yeah, fair enough, right? That does seem par for the course for spin-offs. However, new Pokemon Snap, a game that released a year later, has sold 2.4 million copies, about double that Rescue Team DX. I don't know what's considered a good amount of copies sold, but I hope that Rescue Team DX sold well enough. Enough for the Pokemon Company to revisit Misery Dungeon. It was a real shock when Rescue Team DX was announced. I honestly thought Super was gonna be it. I was way more excited about Rescue Team than Galar DLC, and so I'd 100% be on board if Explorers DX was announced. As long as it's truly a combination of time, darkness, and sky. Please don't forget Explorers of Sky like how BDSP forgot Platinum. I want to see the extra content in the special episodes. Team Charm are my girls. And now for the next spin-off I'd like to see happen, which I think is less likely than Explorers DX, but some might consider this more likely. A Pokemon Anniversary Collection or older titles being re-released on the Switch eShop. Back in 2021 with Pokemon 25, people theorized about something called the Pokemon Master Collection, which like other anniversary collections, would have a bundle of legacy games. People theorized what games the Master Collection would have, some even claiming it would include nearly every game, one from every generation up until Gen 8, but what would be most likely is just Yellow, Crystal, and Emerald, every enhanced version of the first three generations. But with Gens 1 and 2 still on the 3DS eShop, the Master Collection was only a theory. However, now with the 3DS eShop also closing down, there won't be a way to legally play Gen 1 or 2, so it's the perfect time to revisit the idea of an anniversary collection. Honestly, while I have Yellow and Crystal on my 3DS, I wouldn't mind the option to also play them on my Switch, especially if they were bundled with a Gen 3 game, which is the only Gen I haven't played yet, though they could also just be released on the Switch eShop. I am definitely a sheep who would pay for these games again, so long as they're fairly priced. They were 10 bucks on the Switch eShop, so I expect the same from a Switch re-release. But going back to the main topic, there is a reason I specify the first three gens. I can't see 4 or 5 being released on the Switch. With Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl on the Switch, there is no way they release Diamond and Pearl and Platinum, and we all know that Gen 5 remakes are coming eventually. Like I said, it's not a matter of if, but when. And if it is limited to the first two generations, then it can include all Gen 3 Pokemon games. Not just the enhanced versions. Red, Blue, and Green, Gold and Silver, Ruby and Sapphire and Fire Red and Leaf Green, and hopefully trading would be possible. Well, I don't think it would happen this year, it could happen one day, like 2026 during Pokemon 30, which would be a perfect time for an anniversary collection. Next has something to do with Poke Park. Listen, I've seen the reviews. I know people think Poke Park is just mid, but I don't care. I love this series so much. My siblings and I would play it all the time when we were younger, doing funny voices and jokes with the characters, and so I want to see the series revisited in some way. There are three ways this could happen. The most obvious one, and the one I'm sure most of us would prefer, Poke Park 3, just a straight up sequel to this series. After all, Pokemon Snap got a sequel after 20 years, so why can't Poke Park get one after just 10 years? The gameplay will be similar to the originals. Since Poke Park 2 gave us a Unova starters, Poke Park 3 should probably do something similar. If it's released around this generation, then the Pal Pokemon could be the Baldea starters, which could be interesting. Sprigatito being the agile one who could climb walls, Foy Coco being the tough one who buys through obstacles, and of course Quaxi being the one who crosses water. Another way 
Kirby Poké Park and Return is an HD remake, like how Zelda games get. The graphics of the originals haven't aged the best, so a graphical update would be great. Poké Park could also just be on the eShop. I hope more people get a chance to play a Poké Park game. They're just nice, relaxing games. Who doesn't like making Pokemon friends? So what do you guys think? Think Poké Park deserves another shot? Or is this series rightfully forgotten? Let me know how you feel. But now we're at the final two spin-offs. And let me say, these last two are definitely not happening. The first three honestly can, or maybe will happen at some point. But these last two need the stars to align. The first of these wish fulfillment games is Pokémon Gym Maker. It's Mario Maker, but you create Pokémon Gyms. I and many others have always wanted to create our own gyms. The concept is even a genre for Poketubers, which goes to show how interested people are in this idea. The concept would be as followed. You choose what gameplay style you want to play with, anything in the first five generations. Afterwards, you set tiles, place trainers, choose their teams, along with what team the player will use, with the goal being to bow the gym leader, whose team you also create. You can go into specifics like movesets, abilities you can play Gen 3 onwards, items, and what IVs and EVs they use. You can set what the gym trainers say, their difficulty setting, and maybe use that to create your own little story. Like Mario Maker, you can impose levels you can't be yourself, preventing overly hard levels, but you could probably still create some tough challenges. There are some things to consider though, such as fairy types. Obviously, the fairy type didn't exist until Gen 6, so if we limit ourselves to our simple art styles, we'd either need to go without fairy types, or have an option to turn fairy types on or off. On top of that, there need to be animations of fairy moves. And now, the final spin-off I want to see happen one day, a game that has little to no chance of happening, but would be cool either way. It's an official version of something like Pokemon Showdown. While I don't battle online in Pokemon, seeing an official game that allows you to battle in any format would be nothing short of really cool. I don't know about you, but an official way to battle online in any generation you want would be a fun thing to experiment with. A game like this could be continually updated every generation, incorporating new Pokemon, items, and gimmicks each gen. But of course, this idea does still have problems. Game Freak seems to like what they've been doing since Sword and Shield. With the national decks being cut from all Pokemon games, Game Freak 2 will be in the next competitive format. And I'm sure there are fans who wouldn't like an official showdown. Probably if they're fans of the Pokemon showdown we have now. If they did make an official battle simulator, or even just something similar, they would probably crack down on Pokemon showdown, which I can see people not being happy with. With that, we have my top 5 Pokemon spin-offs. I definitely don't think all of them will happen. I mean, those last two are definitely not happening. But if they do, then let the record show that I called it. So once again, let me know what spinoffs you want to see happen. Would you be interested in my spinoffs? Let me know in the comments below. Have a nice day, you wonderful people. Game Boy games are being added to Nintendo Switch Online. More games will be added in the future.